introduction to statistics and in this video we're going to talk about um, the measurement okay in statistics and their measurement skills or their levels of measurement some books um, call it skills of measurement again um, my source is a handout created by dr. Linares so first let's let's define measurement okay so in statistics uh, measurement has has a different somehow different definition okay so in statistics measurement is the process of assigning numbers to observations okay it's the process of assigning numbers to observations okay so normally when one hears the term measurement you may think in terms of measuring the length of something for example the length of a piece of wood okay or measuring a quantity of something uh, say a cup of coffee coffee rather a cup of water okay how many liters does it have how many gallons for example so this only represents a limited use of the term measurement so in statistics a limited um, the term measurement is used more broadly and is more appropriately termed skills or measurement or levels of measurement okay so the skills of measurement refers to ways in which variables or numbers are defined and categorized each skill of measurement has certain properties in which in turn determines the appropriateness for use of certain statistical analysis so um, given the skill of measurement or the level of measurement of something it will um, give us or in turn give us okay what appropriate statistical tool will be used okay the four skills of measurement are nominal ordinal and turbulent ratio and we'll we're going to discuss them one by one so let's start with nominal level okay so the nominal level of measurement um, this just uses numbers to indicate categories for purely classification or identification purposes only okay which in term serves the numbers serve as codes only okay um, any number can be used to represent a category as long as they do not duplicate okay they do not duplicate um, numbers do not indicate order among categories so it's only for identification purposes okay codes they do not possess any rank order skill rank order set or rank order properties shall we say the numbers have no numeric properties okay they have no numeric properties hence the four fundamental operations I'm referring to addition subtraction multiplication division and uh, yeah that's four <laughs> okay and division cannot be applied to the numbers in this scale of measurement in the nominal scale okay and also categories are mutually exclusive which means the observations cannot fall into more than one category okay it cannot fall in more than one category um, and also categories are also exhaustive they are also exhaustive that there must be enough categories for all observations okay so these terms are common to you guys um, we have discussed this um, in in quite some videos before so let's give some examples for the nominal scale um, very basic is the male okay let's assign let's measure male as one let's give it an assigned number one and female as two okay and more examples say religious affiliation let's say Roman Catholic is one Baptist is two INC is three Islam is four and etc okay just some kind remarks um, with this assigning the number two to the female does not imply that females are better than males or the other way around these numbers are simply for coding okay simply for coding simply for classification likewise here it doesn't mean that Islam is the one with the highest value because it's number four no this is just for codes okay only for coding purposes these numbers cannot be um, arithmetically manipulated for example um, you cannot get the average sex just like you know adding both of them and dividing by two so that's n that's not correct that's entirely wrong also here we cannot get the average religious affiliation so they cannot be manipulated arithmetically okay so that's the nominal level of measurement let's proceed to the next one which is the ordinal level of measurement now um, take note this ordinal level possess all the categories of 
all the properties of the nominal level. So this is the next level. Okay, and this time it now possesses rank order characteristics. There is now ranks in such categories. Though the categories must still be ex mutually, ex mutually exclusive rather, and exhaustive, they also indicate the order of magnitude in some variables. Okay, so they have now the order of magnitude. And the numbers serve as codes still, but must now be assigned in consecutive order, indicating the degree of level. Okay, uh, for example, giving us lowest to highest, most preferred to least preferred, etc. So there is now a consecutive order um, telling us the, the order of characteristics. Um, some examples of the ordinal scale is the famous Likert item response scale. So the Likert scale is one that uses strongly agree, agree, neither agree nor disagree. Uh, some Likert scale use, use neutral for this, uh, disagree and strongly disagree. So we assign codes for that. Okay, and we we can see that one strongly agree is better than agree. Okay, disagree is better than strongly agree, strongly disagree rather. Also, um, size of t-shirts small one, medium two, large three. So we're we're giving codes there, and at the same time, we know that medium is bigger than small, large is bigger than medium. Okay. So, some remarks, um, although the numbers are assigned in consecutive order, it cannot be assumed that the difference between two consecutive numbers are the same anywhere in the scale. For example, here in the Likert scale, we don't know the order, or rather, we don't know the, the, um, the scale, okay, the difference between this scale. For example, the difference in 1 here and 2 here, okay, we know that one is better than two but we don't know how how much okay okay and it is not necessarily same as between four and five so the difference here between one and two is not necessarily the same in four and five also not necessarily the same with two and three so we don't know the the actual difference from one and two likewise here we don't know the actual difference of small to medium and medium to large we just know that that large is bigger than medium medium is bigger than small okay so we have that um, some remarks in the ordinal scale of measurement okay some um, notes to remember between the nominal and ordinal scale of measurement um, nominal and s ordinal scale data are basically categories slash levels converted to numeric codes Okay, and can you remember what type of variables give us categories and levels? Okay, um, that is the qualitative variables generate either nominal because they are said to be in categories and levels, correct? So qualitative variables generate nominal, that is categories, data. And we have ordinal, that is levels, data. So qualitative variables are, or is going to give us nominal or ordinal scale data. Just take note of that. Okay, let's move on to the interval level. Okay, so for the interval level of measurement, okay, it has all the properties take note of the ordinal level or ordinal scale of measurement. Okay, so it has it has some categories. It does um, give us the categories and and also has the rank order characteristics. But this scale now represents quantity that has equal parts or equal units rather okay a scale that represents quantity and has equal units so a given interval that is a distance between scores has the same meaning anywhere on the scale okay so the the values are the same for each um, interval or for, for each distance okay on the scale so also the interval scale provides information about how much better one value okay is better with another okay it gives us that information um going back to the Likert scale one versus two we don't know how how better one is um compared to two but here in interval we answer that problem how better is one going to two of course we cannot answer that in Likert scale but uh, but in the examples of the interval level we can do that 
also um just a word of advice that in an in interval level we don't have this absolute zero there is no absolute zero in the interval level that is to say zero does not represent the absolute lowest value but simple as an additional point of measurement and not the absence okay zero doesn't mean the absence of the property being measured i want to emphasize on that okay so zero um there's no absolute zero that is um it doesn't mean that when you say zero it's the absence of the property being measured for instance um say for example we'll have temperature um let's make it um the same with our temperature um standard or temperature language let's use degrees celsius okay so think come to think for a while that temperature is defined okay again temperature is defined as the measurement or the measure of the warm warmth or coldness of an object or substance so um, the the place or the climate okay tells us about that okay the temperature coldness or warmness um water boils at 100 degrees celsius and freezes at zero degrees celsius okay and we know that ice is cold cold to touch however when you say zero degrees celsius zero okay zero okay um it doesn't imply that there is a complete abs absence of any temperature okay it doesn't imply that there's an absence of heat or an absence of coldness okay actually zero degrees celsius is the low is the absolute lowest value in cel in the celsius thermometer okay or rather zero degrees celsius rather is not okay it's not the absolute lowest value in the celsius thermometer so it doesn't mean that when you say zero degrees celsius there's no temperature okay and come to think of it for a while we can now define that there is the the, the equal difference when we move along the scale so when you say 10 degrees celsius versus 20 degrees celsius um 10 degrees celsius is colder than 20 degrees celsius okay and 30 degrees celsius is hotter okay or 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 warmer 30 degrees celsius is warmer than 20 degrees celsius and we can tell it by the scale that the scales are equal 10 degrees celsius 20 degrees celsius 30 degrees celsius uh, 40 degrees celsius so we can say that we can measure now the difference from one item to another okay so there is there is now the measurement per okay per interval per interval data okay so that's the meaning of it okay again there is a measurement um, we can now measure between data okay between in between the interval data the measurement of how what is the difference between two values and there's no absolute zero um, value another examples are scores on the test or test scores so test measures knowledge gained by a student about one topic so a score of zero does not imply complete absence of knowledge gained by a student about a topic so when you just scored zero on a test it doesn't mean that you're you know you do, your brain is empty or, or things like that um it, it just implies that in the in that certain score you get a, an, a score of zero it seems that you just find that difficult but it doesn't mean that you have the complete absence of that knowledge of that topic that's why in grades when you get a score of zero doesn't mean that it's zero percent it means that it's 65 percent because it doesn't mean that that you're really you know there's your brain is empty and it doesn't have any any knowledge in it okay so that's it in test scores let's proceed to the next level of measurement um this is now the last level this is the ratio level okay so the ratio level possesses all the characteristics of the interval scale which means that um which means that it has the the rank order characteristics okay it has the um it knows the difference okay between okay it knows the difference between one value from another okay one value from another and also it represents quantity and has equality of units also just like in the interval scale so this is the most informative scale 
as it tends to tell about the order and number of objects between the values of the scale. Okay, so it is the most informative scale. It has also a true or absolute zero this time. Okay, so when you say zero in the ratio level, it it pos it tells us that when you say zero, it's the absence of that property. Okay, it's the absence of that property. That is, no numbers exist below zero, if that's the case, and there are no negative numbers then. Okay, there are no negative numbers. And also, we can say that the ratio of two values is meaningful. Okay, so when you say, for example, one object has twice the length of the other. Okay, so the ratio is 1 is to 2. Or is twice as long as the other, as thrice, that's 1 is to 3. Okay, um, also in the ratio level, this allows us the comparison of intervals or differences. Okay, so let's give some examples for the ratio level. So, actually, most of the items or things that can be measured are ratio level. Okay, so distance, um, it has all the properties of the interval level, but now it has an absolute zero. So when you say zero distance, you didn't move anywhere. So then there's an absolute absence of the distance. When you, when you say height, so yeah, you, you're measuring it. And there's an absolute zero. When you say zero height, so meaning um, you don't have a height. There's a complete absence of a height. Likewise with the weight, same explanation. Time, same explanation. So you have zero time with her or with him. So that's an absolute cap absence of time. And the cost of the car. So if it's free, so, you know, the cost is zero. So that's absolute zero. Okay. Um, so just remember, um, just some notes about the interval and ratio scale. The interval and ratio scale data possess inherently numeric characteristics and i think that's very obvious um, by the by the explanation that we had um just now number two quantitative variables remember quantitative variables generate interval or ratio scale data again quantitative variables generate interval or ratio scale data okay so again we have quantity Right? We have qualitative variables and we have quantitative variables. Quantitative variables indicate this. They indicate this. Okay? Usually, but not but not strictly, um, discrete variables are interval, ratio are, are continuous. Strictly, but not all the time. Okay? Not all the time. Okay? So let's have a summary table for the things that we have talked about. That is the um, measurement scales. So we have here the four measurement scales. We have nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. So all of them possess in indications of difference. So that's the first step, nominal. It has that. Second step on the line, it has the, ratio, the ordinal. It has the indications difference, just like in the nominal. But it now gives us a direction of difference, meaning it gives us the order okay so ordinal possesses all the information or all the, the properties of, 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 of ordinal rather possesses all the properties of nominal but with order interval possesses all the properties of ordinal but now with the amount of difference and ratio possesses all the all the um, properties of interval but now with the absolute zero so you can see the table um, about that so one one scale um, stands on the shoulders of the other so ratio um, stands on the interval interval stands on the ordinal ordinal stands on the nominal and the nominal starts at all so you will notice in that table above here that only the ratio scale meets the criteria of all the four properties of the scales of measurement so when you say it is ratio ratio is also interval um, it is also ordinal, it is also, also nominal, but um, since it has the absolute zero, we will name it as the ratio scale. Okay, so that's the summary for the four, um, four uh, measurement scales that we have, and this is the end of this video that we have talked about. Uh, okay, so um, just, uh, just a, what do you call that, our...
a summary a measurement in statistics is the is the process of assigning numbers to data and we have four scales of measurement or measurement scales we have the nominal um, just for categorical purposes only we have the ordinal let's see if i can write here so uh, yeah that's good we have the nominal that's number one meaning it has only the rank order the only only the categorical number two we have the ordinal okay we name plus we order number three is the interval it has the name it has the order but we now know the meaning between two values okay and and that meaning that difference is equal all along the, the scale and number four we have ratio um, it has ratio okay it has all the properties of interval only that it, it now has an absolute zero or the absolute absence of something okay so thank you again um, for watching um, I would like to acknowledge the handout by dr. Lunaris um, for for my content of all these videos okay so thank you very much um, hope you would like and subscribe to this uh, to this video and to my channel so thank you very much for watching okay see you soon